Hello YouTube land. Got my Sigma here, headed at the range. Uh, I've been carrying this lately, in this holster, and that clip is still just a piece of crap. But I did get the holster so that my hand fits in here really well. And when I grab, I can grab the firearm and I'm not grabbing the, the holster here. So it works pretty well. It holds really well. I need to try to stretch it just a little bit. But had this at the range. Um, magazine's out. Chamber's clear. So I need to clean it. Safe direction. Um, I've done all the YouTube trigger fixes that everybody, the homebrew trigger fixes for this thing. Um, I don't think it made really, to me, it didn't really make that much difference. So, but I'm going to get an Apex kit as soon as I can afford it, and we'll put that in. Um, tear down on this is just like a Glock. Just kind of slide her back just a little bit after you dry fired it. Pull your tabs down and the slide comes right off. Pop out your guide rod. Barrel comes right out. Um, I've ran run a patch down the bore and kind of cleaned the barrel up already. Um, it'll get a lot of carbon right around these areas, right around these hard areas, along here. And you just kind of soak it a little bit. I use hops. Um, and it works really well for me. But soak it a little bit and take your brush. This has a nice narrow end on it. It's a clean four gun cleaning. And then the other side is more like a toothbrush. I've used toothbrushes before. They don't work so well. The solvent reacts with that plastic they make. And it's uh, not a good thing. So I'm just going to run a dry patch down and see what we got. I'm running it through with the brush, so I want a really, really tight fit. And there we go, we still got a bunch of crud in there. Um, but I'm not all that concerned with it, I think we got most of it out. Take the brush off, and then I'll put my jag on. And I will run one more patch down there. I tried to, I started recording this earlier and had some good comical stuff with my wife when she stopped down to pick a, a spaghetti sauce to use since we usually have a couple of different ones around. And that patch came out pretty clean. So I'm going to call that good and just kind of wipe the bore, wipe the barrel off. It's stainless steel barrel so I'm not really worried about it rusting. The rest of the slide um, down in here. I don't know if you can see it, there's plenty of carbon in there. So I'm going to take some CLP just on a patch and just kind of get it wet. I want it good and soggy and then I'll take my brush to it. There's a plunger here. Kind of take, take your patch and just kind of push that down and rub over it. Um, but down the, the rail grooves here and stuff. You want to just kind of wipe all that down. Then I'll take my brush. The small end will really get into the corners nice. And you can go right down your slots for the rail. Get those nice and clean. And some people think that uh, cleaning guns is overrated. Uh, I carry this from time to time, and I don't know about you, but I like my carry gun to be clean. I want to be able to uh, rely on it. Soak up your, your uh, breech face here, your bolt face, and get in those corners too. Um, the less crud. Now taking the firing pin out of this is kind of a pain, so I'm not going to do that this time. I do that about probably every four, five, six hundred rounds. I'll pull the firing pin out and clean the firing pin channel too. Um, not real concerned about it, but it, that'll be a complete detail strip. And everything will come out 
everything will get cleaned. I may do video on that. It's going to be a lot longer process than what this is. Because uh, just to, you know, give it a quick clean isn't much. And really, I don't need to do a cleaning video. There's probably a hundred of them on YouTube already. But, you know, content. <laughs> it's kind of nice to have a little. Um, but, you know, I'm one of those guys that buy, the, buy an inexpensive gun. I take care of them. I trust this with my life. Obviously, if I'm carrying it. Um, even though my patch is a little dirty, I'm just going to kind of get some uh, CLP on here just to kind of. I got a little crud in the grooves and that kind of stuff that I just like to get out. I like it to look good too. And I do like the looks of this one. I think it's pretty pretty cool looking. It's not a not 1911 by any means. Anyone that knows me knows I'm a 1911 guy. I like my 45. Uh, my Baluster Molina is kind of a copy, a weird copy of a 1911. And I really like the way that shoots. And as soon as I get around and get some more leather, I'll make a holster for it. And I'll probably carry that once in a while too. But mostly to work on some of my holster making skills. I've had a request for one of my checkbook covers and a wallet. So I know I did the video on the wallet. I might do one on the checkbook cover, but it's pretty much the same process, just bigger. Um, but that's all you need to do on the slide. The spring, you can't take it apart. And here you want to get in here. You want to get down through here in the trigger group, everything that moves. You want to make sure you get it clean. Um, I kind of lubed everything up already on this. I started and just did that. But you want to get in there. And I'll do a video when I get my Apex trigger kit, the spring kit. Um, and you'll get to see how all that goes in. There's a lot of, there's some videos on YouTube that. Uh, do the kit, but they're on an M&P, so it's a little bit different process. Not much. They're very similar guns. But that's about it for that. You can pop your barrel back in. Make sure it gets seated. Make sure you got your guide rod the right direction. This is plastic. I'm trying to find a steel one, though. Uh, I made a steel one for my high point. Forty Smith and Wesson High Point that I've done a lot of work on. So you just want to stick her in there, and just like a Glock, you just slide it, and it should go back together. What's wrong? What did I do wrong? I didn't do anything wrong. There. So there you go. That's the low down, quick and dirty, and clean in the Smith and Wesson Sigma. Um, I'm a, <laughs> I took several to the range, and uh, I've got a lot of cleaning to do right now. Um, when I get to my Mosin, I don't think I've showed that on video yet. Uh, I customized my Mosin Nagant rifle, and I think you might get a kick out of it. So I'm going to. Uh, I'll do video on that one when I clean that and kind of explain some of the things that I did on it. Uh, I've done a lot of work on that one. Uh, the bolt is about as smooth as butter. So uh, I'll get some video on that just so you can see it. It's uh, pretty cool the way I got it set up. It's like a sniper rifle. And I'll explain a little bit when I do that. So with that being said, um, and the quickie cleaning, that's kind of a field cleaning on the Sigma, just because I put a few hundred rounds through it and I like to clean it afterwards. Um, that all being said, I am going to let you all have a good night. Um, I got some more cleaning to do. I'll clean my Neos and my Ballister Molina. And my High Point, I'm having an issue with my 40 Smith & Wesson High Point, but I've got about 2,000 rounds through it. And I think I just need a new firing pin spring. 
so I may have to uh, call High Point up. It's got a lifetime warranty. Um, I think they'll just send me the spring. So we'll see how that goes. I'll let you know. Uh, I reckon that's all I'm going to have to do, even if they charge me for it, I, which I don't think they will. Um, it can't be that expensive. So, uh, you all have a good night. Uh, stay safe, and God bless.